Hey guys, what's up? Brandon here, and today I'm going to show you how you can make a video to put on YouTube. Because I get a lot of questions about the programs that I use, the settings that I use, and how I render out a video to post on the internet. And so today I'm going to walk you through that process. Now first things first, let's talk programs. I use DX3 to actually capture in-game footage and record that raw footage to my hard drive. Then I use Sony Vegas to record commentary and actually render out the video um, and put it into a file size that's reasonable to upload to YouTube. So DX3 and Sony Vegas are both paid programs and this tutorial is going to assume that you already have those programs and that you have them installed. Um, if you don't have either of those programs, then this tutorial may not be as useful to you, but hopefully you can still get something out of it uh, by looking at the settings that I'm using and whatnot. So let's start off. Let's go to our trusty Google and let's just type in Lagrith. So here's the Lagrith codec as the first result. It's really easy. You're just going to download the installer. It's going to download really quick and we're going to run it. We're going to hit next and we're already finished. Okay, so the codec is very easy to install. You may need to restart, I'm not sure. Once you have that installed, open up DX3. Now, DX3 is a very powerful program. It has a lot of options, and I'm not gonna run through all those options today. The tab that we're really concerned about is the movie settings. So, you can see here, the first thing we wanna look at is the codec. I have the, Lag the Lagrith lossless codec selected. There are a lot of other codecs available that you can use, but I found Lagrith to be the best one because it keeps very high quality video at a very low file size. We're talking probably around a gigabyte per minute or so, which is a very manageable size for raw footage. So um, select that codec and then click this configuration box. We're gonna select YV12 mode and check the box for use multi-threading. Um, I'm going to select that because I have a multi-core processor and I'm assuming a lot of you will also have dual or quad or hexa-core processors so you'll probably want to check that box as well. I haven't messed with anything in here with the clipping but I have scaled my recording down to 1280 by 720 so this is a really nice feature of DX3 that uh, I haven't seen in other programs like Fraps where I'm playing in 1080p but I often don't want to record in 1080p because it takes up more file space. So I just have DX3 automatically scale the recording down to 720p. Really nice feature. Um, record in AVI file format, file output, and 30fps. Okay. So as I said, there are a lot of other uh, options in DX3 that you can set. A lot of them are just personal preference. This is what's really going to affect the quality of the video. Okay. So next, we've already set that up, so let's say you record some gameplay, all right, you have some raw gameplay on your hard drive. Next, we're going to open up Sony Vegas. All right, so now that we have Sony Vegas open, I'm going to drag in some gameplay footage that I have here, some Tribes footage. And once it's in our project media list, I'm going to drag that down into our timeline, and you see that it'll populate all of our audio and video tracks. I'm going to delete a couple of these extra tracks here. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to click on the video, right click and go to switches and check disable resample. I'm not sure why smart resample always defaults to on, but we don't want that. And you may also want to uncheck maintain aspect ratio. This is especially important if you don't capture gameplay natively in 720p or 1080p. If you have a monitor that's something like 1680 by 1050 or 1920 by 1200, something that's not a standard video output resolution for YouTube, you'll want to uncheck this so that you can output to a resolution that looks good on YouTube. So once we've done that, click on project properties and this is where we're actually going to set the resolution and video quality settings for our project. So you can see here I use 1280 by 720 standard 720p resolution. Field order is upper field first. These should be defaults. Frame rate is 30 frames per second. Pixel format 32-bit floating point full range. Rendering quality is best. Motion blur type is Gaussian. The interlace method is none. You can also mess with these uh, tabs on the top, but the defaults should be just fine. It's up to you. Click OK. Now you can also add some commentary in here if you want. You can record or you can splice more videos in with the current video. But once you've got a video that you're happy with, I'm just going to grab a little snippet of gameplay here. 
and we're going to go to file render as now <clears throat> Here's where you choose what type of file you want to encode the video as. You can see I have a few different templates that I use. You won't have these templates, so you'll need to create a new one. So I typically upload in WMV format, and the reason for that is that YouTube can process WMV files as they're still being uploaded, whereas other file formats, like MP4 for instance, have to upload completely to YouTube before it can do any of its processing and encoding. So I like WMV just because your video will go live a little bit sooner um, and the quality difference seems to be negligible. So first of all, the audio settings here, constant bitrate, CBR, 192 kilobits per second. For the video settings here, constant bitrate again, CBR, Windows Media Video 9 is the format, and image size is standard 720p. Frame rate is 30, seconds per keyframe is 5. Compression buffer, 3 seconds and video smoothness 100. For the bitrate, 14 million. Index summary, we don't need to worry about that. And project, we just need to make sure video rendering quality is on best. Now this is a good time to say that I'm not an expert in all of these settings. I've come to them over talking with friends and experimenting on my own and I found that these settings work well for me. But if you find different settings that work better and you think look better, then by all means use those. But these settings are here for you as a baseline um, because these are what I use for my videos. So let's hit OK and uh, let's give our video a name and we'll render it out. Now, your rendering time is going to be affected by several different things. The length of the video, obviously. Uh, the resolution that you're rendering at will affect the rendering time. Also, your CPU, obviously, your hardware, um, will affect how quickly you can render. And your video quality settings, also. So, several different things will affect how long it takes. This is a really short clip, so we're already done. And once it's finished, you want to check your video to make sure that it looks good, to make sure that Vegas didn't screw something up. Um, because I have had Vegas encounter uh, some issues before with like black screens and that sort of thing. So we'll check our video real quick, make sure it looks good. It's pretty short. Looks good. No artifacts or anything. All right. So once we've done that, we're pretty much done. Now if you're not happy with your audio levels or your video quality settings or something like that, you can always go back and change those and re-render your file. But otherwise, if you're happy with it, you are ready to go to upload on YouTube. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments section or drop me a message on Twitter. I typically get to those quicker. Uh, as I said, I'm not a Vegas expert per se, but I will answer anything that I know the answer to. And if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you'd throw it a like or show it to your friends who are interested in making videos themselves, perhaps. Um, I think that's about it, guys. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.